Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Line Hauler by Aussie Road Train. It plays two to six players, is for ages 13 and up, and takes about an hour to an hour and a half to play. And in the game Line Hauler, you are going to be driving a line haul truck across Australia. You're going to position one of your characters on each of the different capitals, and you'll be utilizing dice to move. You'll also be gathering a manifest card, whether it be A or B, and trying to make your way across the country in order to get your delivery or shipment to a specific area on the board. Now, of course, as you move along the board, there's going to be stops or detours or distractions allowing you to purchase property or not be able to go through a tunnel because maybe your truck is too big or weighs too much, as well as, of course, gathering things like paydays and acquiring new licenses to improve your vehicle's strength, and all the while attempting to deliver manifests. Each time you deliver two manifests, you'll upgrade your truck, and then eventually you'll get to that final most coveted of different trucks, uh, which is going to be the road train. And once you get here, deliver two more manifests and then get to a capital through a manifest, you'll win the game. There's alternate ways to play. And of course that involves making more money, but in general, that's the idea. Roll dice, get those manifests, and then get your truck upgraded so that you can deliver the best packages possible en route through Australia. To set up a game of line hauler, all you'll need to do is choose the number of players and then have each of those players take a color and place their color on the board in the indicated space that has a little symbol of their color and it's going to represent one of the different capitals in Australia. Then give every single player $20,000, that will be the currency they start with, kind of like a game of Monopoly. Give every single player a rigid truck, uh, this is going to be the starting truck they'll have, but you'll be able to upgrade it up to three more times throughout the game when you attempt to win. Make sure that you shuffle the manifest A and B cards and place them on the playing board, as well as the fifth wheel cards and the payday cards. Additionally, there will be licenses and properties that people can purchase. You can set them aside somewhere on the board or next to the board within reach of all players. Then go ahead and give the starting player both die and roll them, and whoever has the highest value will be able to go first in the game. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so how to play Lion Hauler. It's actually very simple. The player who rolled the highest value of the two dice will then begin the game. They will choose the direction or route they want to go because you're going to have a manifest card to start the game with. And it'll tell you uh, what type of vehicle you, ha you need in order to uh, utilize the card where you need to go and where it's located on the board with actually uh, some nice symbols like WA might tell you the area in which the, uh, the area that you're going to be delivering is going to be, the type of cargo you have, and then of course the value that you're going to get. And they have different types of uh, manifest cards as well. Some of them actually play uniquely in the game, which I'll talk about in the review, but a more basic one would be this one here. This one says the type of type of truck you have, where you need to go, and what you have in the truck, and if there's any additional variables in here. And you're going to have that in front of you, and you'll select the route that you're going to be taking. So for instance, maybe I'm playing as this player here, and I want to make sure that I get to Mount Isa. I'm going to say I'm going to go south, and then I'm going to go east, and then I'm going to roll the dice. After you roll the dice, you're going to move that player, or that character, that many number of spaces, until you encounter a space that either A, makes you stop, or B, is the location you want it to be. Otherwise, you're just going to move the full movement and do whatever that space says. So roll the dice, move that many spaces, encounter the space, unless there's a space that makes you stop, or you reach your destination, in which case you can just stop altogether and turn your manifest card in. There are a ton of different spaces on the board that all do a ton of different things. And in fact, there's a full booklet in the rules that illustrates what all of those spaces do. And instead of getting into all of them, that would take quite a bit of time. I'll talk about some of them in my review. But what I will say is that after you've collected your manifest card and then you've moved to the location you need to get to to turn your card in, you will then gather a currency based on the type of vehicle that you have. Then you will draw a new manifest card. In the base game, you can choose either of the two A and B manifests, but remember that the A ones are a little easier and a little less required, and then the B are a little more challenging but give you more money. After you've completed two manifest cards, you then need to try and land an upgrade space. Uh, but you can always keep turning in manifests if you want, because you'll always have one. But once you turn in, um, and once you get to an upgrade space, you can basically utilize your money or currency to get a upgraded version of your truck. So you can go from a rigid truck to a semi-trailer, then to a B-double, and then to a road train. And there's a cost on your card uh, to see how much it's going to cost to upgrade. So it'll be like $3,000 to upgrade from a rigid truck to a semi-trailer. And you can then 
go and continue your the game. And eventually you'll get two more manifests done, you'll find an upgrade space, you'll upgrade to your B-double, and so on and so forth. Every single time you get to an upgrade space, you cannot always upgrade. You have to have at least completed two. And once you do get to an upgrade space after completing two, you have to finish your current manifest before you can upgrade your vehicle. Uh, and that's pretty much the idea of the game. Moving around the board, landing on spaces, collecting currency, losing currency. There's certain spaces that you can land on that will give you licenses, that will give you some type of benefit in the game, whether it be something like a tow license, preventing you from being towed, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe a pilot service license that will help you in certain ways. You have properties. Once you buy one of the types of properties that you land on, you will get the benefit of them. Um, they're sometimes very expensive. And you can get money from other players as well. And of course, if they're unowned, you can just straight up buy them. And then of course, uh, there's spaces like detours that let you move from one space to another. There's going to be stops. There's going to be things that involve like flooding and the type of currents or type of stuff you're tra traveling in your truck with. But for the most part, uh, that's the game. Use your currency. You can always change the notions if you want. And currency isn't the most important part of the game, but it is what allows you to get from the rigid truck to the road train. Get the road train finish two manifests, the third manifest gets you to a capital, end the game there, and you win the game, line hauler. Okay, so let's discuss the game line hauler. Now, what I normally don't do in a review is go through a board and symbols booklet, but there's a ton of space on the board, ton of spaces, and to denote them all, I have to look down, look back up, constantly cutting and ending. I want to do all that. I'd rather explain a few of them to you, utilizing the book it here. Uh, first thing foremost, the most important thing is the dealer slash upgrade spaces. These will let you uh, upgrade or increase the upgrades of your truck, you'll pay a currency, and you'll utilize these spaces in order to do so. But you have to land on them first and have those two manifests in order for you to upgrade. So they're pretty challenging, actually. <laughs> you have things like breakdowns and tire repairs. You have towing and you have pilot slash escort. These involve licenses that you can gather. And of course, there's certain things that you can do if, you, if they're unowned or if they're owned. You have payday cards that will let you draw these guys. So you have little spaces on the board that have like a money symbol. And when you do that, you're going to get uh, certain payments based on your truck, or you're going to lose a certain amount of currency based on your truck. There's a ton of different things. Think of this as like a community uh, chance type thing from Monopoly. It functions very similarly in that way. You also have the fifth wheels. Basically, whenever you come across something in the game that is going to involve you having to pay, you'll draw one of these cards at random and determine the value based on whatever it might be. So for instance, if you encounter a park fee, you'll draw this card and then you'll check, okay, I owe $250. Or maybe uh, I, I encounter something like a meal or a shower, that's gonna cost me 150. Or perhaps I have something that involves my tires, that's gonna cost me $4,500. So this is a constant way of changing the game in terms of how how much you're paying based on the consequences of landing on certain spaces. There's a bunch of different stop spaces that have like a red circle around them and some of them have an X through them or a cross through them, like fruit flies and cattle ticks. Basically, if you have a certain type of cargo and you move into those specific areas, it'll make you stop and you'll lose a turn. There's narrow bridges and tunnels, which means you can't proceed if you have uh, certain, there's certain rules and requirements as to what you can put, get through and what you can't get through based on your truck. Things like accidents you'll land on will make you lose a turn. Uh, help trucks, help cars let you move forward certain spaces. And uh, there's also rules about overtaking. When you move, uh, going this way, players, you can just move past them or share the same space. But if you're going the same way and you go on to their space, what will happen is they'll move back one and you will move into their space. You'll encounter their space, they will encounter the new space. And that can be beneficial or, or not. And that's the idea. The game's like, you know, it's, it's all about moving around, rolling dice, moving to the locations and choosing your destinations based on the route you want to make in order to get to a space. You're not always guaranteed to get what you want. Sometimes you have to travel from one side of the, of the country to the other, which can be a big pain in the butt. There's a lot of chance in this game. Uh, sometimes you'll get super lucky and draw a manifest card and oh, the location is right next to you. And on your next roll, you get a boatload of money. And other times you'll go from one space all the way across the board to get the same amount or even less amount of money. It's just kind of uh, random in that sense. It has a lot of similarities to kind of classical board games and then it has a mix of those classics with some more of a modern twist. This is a pickup and delivery game at its heart and it utilizes the dice. So if you don't mind the pickup and delivery style games that involves random chance, then this is not going to be an issue for you. It plays pretty quickly and you feel like your turns move fairly quick as well, and you're utilizing your money to do a ton of different things on the board. There's a huge amount of spaces, which allows for a ton of different variability. 
But on the same end, there's a ton of different spaces. And sometimes you're not gonna remember each and every space, especially your first couple playthroughs, and you'll have to constantly be checking this. What does it do? How does it function? Oh, I didn't wanna go that route. Whoops, I didn't realize that that space did that thing that now messes me up. Uh, there's certain things in the rules that aren't expressly clarified. Um, it doesn't say that you actually draw an extra manifest after you draw your first one, but I'm just assuming you do, otherwise I'd have no idea how that works. Um, as well as the fifth wheel, some of the cards when you draw them based on the fifth wheel requirements, I didn't really grasp what the penalty was based on the different types of, uh, different types of, what do you call them, options. So maybe something would be like, oh, I, 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 I fell down and broke my knee, and then I look on here and it's, there's nothing that has to do with injury on here. It's, a, it's a, not an example of what actually happens, but it's how, we, how it felt in the game sometimes. Uh, so some clarifications in the rules would definitely uh, be of use. Um, the boards and spaces, once you got through about halfway through the game, I started to understand them fairly straightforward, where you needed to go, how you needed to work, and, and like gather certain spaces or, or achieve a certain space. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, the also idea of the game, which is Lion Hall Trucking in Australia, I really, really like this theme. I haven't seen a lot of games that incorporate types of themes like this. Uh, one thing I really did enjoy is the fact that I didn't know a whole lot of about the different locations in Australia, and this provides for a lot of educational value. Uh, I've now kind of gotten a larger grasp on the different areas in Australia and where uh, different spaces are and uh, how you need to travel from one location to another. I'm not sure how how accurate all the board is as far as movement goes, but I am sure that the spaces on the board indicating the capitals and whatnot are definitely accurate and if fairly useful as well. So you'll be able to uh, learn about the difference. You know, it's like geography bonus, right? Education value, I like that. <laughs> it's got paper money. Uh, in modern gaming, people don't like this, but in the more classical gaming, they do. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just going to be based on preference. For me, I don't mind them, but they are things that can get warped and damaged over time. They're thin, they're paper money. It's what you would expect with paper money. But overall, the quality of this paper money is nice. The artwork is great on them. I like all the cards, high quality. How the board fits together is kind of like a puzzle piece. It doesn't really bother me all that much, but it's going to have people back and forth. This game's one of those games that I think is going to fit really well with a classic player that's getting into modern gaming, or if you want to jump in with your family and play a game, little kids, younger kids, uh, mid-teens are going to enjoy playing this game as well. Throwing on the educational value of learning about the uh, country of Australia is going to be a benefit, and the fact that it has a ton of replayability. There is a ton of different choices, a different spaces, and you're going to learn a whole lot about where you can move and how routes work. And uh, there's also some take that back and forth in this game. I'm, I'm really on the fence with this one because I really like a lot of certain aspects about it. There's some things in the rules that I'd like to be have clarified. And then um, there's the random chance and it can be drastically mean or drastically nice to you. And I think that just plays into a role of uh, what type of gamer you are. Anyway, if you're interested in taking a look at the game Line Hauler, you can go ahead and check out the link down below in the description. For those of you who like pick up and deliver games, definitely one I would suggest taking a look at and seeing if it'd be interesting for you. But for those of you who don't like chance, it's probably one to stay away from. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Line Hauler. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description. You can also subscribe and hit that like and notification button thing down below. It greatly helps us. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We do a live stream every Wednesday, uh, Sunday. I oh, used to do Wednesdays, Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one on stream, so you can watch them and determine if it's a game that you'd be interested in for yourself. All right, guys, that's all I got this time. And as always, I look forward to driving across Australia with you next time.